I've been thinking a, a lot about adversity and adventure and assumptions and human nature, and, and I guess in a lot of ways. I live a lot of my life in the crossroads, the intersection of those ideas. Um, people uh, have the tendency to, to look at me and, and make assumptions, and they see me and they assume that there are things I can't do, that there are things that I will reach for and, and never be able to accomplish. There are things that uh, people assume about me that uh, are hard. They assume that I must live my life every day with adversity. Um, and there are ideas that I'm constantly grappling with. I actually had Ryan in class, and these are ideas that we talk about in class too, um, last year in our English class. And, and I understand why people may think that. I understand how people may feel that way. And um, I want to spend a little bit of time talking about how I think we need to redefine our ideas of adversity and maybe redefine our ideas of accomplishment. Uh, I think that's a, it's an important topic uh, for us all to consider. So one of the things that uh, I, I found to be interesting is that some of their assumptions are true. There are a handful of things that I know I will never do. I will never run a five minute mile. I will never back squat 375 pounds as much as I would like to be able to do those two things. I will never fly. I will also never stub my toes, never sprain my ankle, never get frostbite, and I'll never regrow my leg. And that's okay. It took me a little while to come to grips with that as a kid, but that's okay. See, when I was born, I was born with a birth defect that made my right leg four inches shorter than my left. And four inches is about this big. So growing up as a kid, I had to wear a big lift on the bottom of my shoe, and I wore a brace that ran up the outside of my leg. And anybody have ever seen Forrest Gump, the braces that he wore, I had one like that on my leg. And growing up was hard. Um, when I was younger in my neighborhood, there were other kids in my neighborhood. I didn't know any different. I didn't know that I was different. I was just a kid in the neighborhood. We rode bikes, we played, we climbed into other people's yards, we got in trouble together. But it was when I went to school that I really learned about difference and I learned about cruelty, and I learned about isolation. I wasn't able to run. I wasn't able to play sports. It hurt to walk more than a half a mile. Growing up, I'd always been told about this miracle lengthening procedure that would make everything normal. That someday I dreamed I would have this procedure, whatever it was, I didn't understand what it was, and that when I woke up the next morning, everything would be normal. I would be normal. I would feel like I was part of everything. And the older I got, the more I asked about having this procedure done. And when I was 14, I remember vividly going to the doctor's office and asking about the procedure. And they looked me in the eye and they said, well, the procedure will only give you two inches and you really need four. So you could do a partial procedure or you could have an amputation. And I looked the doctor in the eye and I jumped up on the table and I said, do it right now. And my parents said, I, I, time out, I'm sorry, what? Like, no one's ever mentioned this to us before. What are you talking about? What do you mean? And we talked about it, and ultimately, when I was 14, I had elective amputation. And when people look at me, they think that amputation must be the most traumatic, most adverse experience that you could go through, and it was the best thing that ever happened to me. It redefined who I was. It let me hit the reset button on my life and start again. When I got to high school, that's when my technical outdoor life began. I was in a program that met after school and on the weekends, and I spent every afternoon and every weekend backpacking, rock climbing, snowshoeing. And every day for my sport, I learned the skills that you needed in order to do those activities successfully. I was with a group of people, and we shared in these experiences. We shared in triumph, we shared in failure, we shared in hardship, we shared in all the adversity of trying all these things in really, truly dangerous places. Places where consequences were real. Places where consequences were immediate. Places where the consequences were high. We felt like what we were doing, the audacity, the thrillingness of the, of the activities, the danger, they were important. They bonded us together as people. 
They bonded us together as individuals. They allowed us to connect with each other, and they allowed me to connect to myself. And as I got older in high school, the scope of the adventures grew, both for our group and for me. Ice climbing, mountaineering, mountain rescue, the Pacific Northwest, Europe. As the lessons continued to grow, as the challenges continued to grow, I learned more and more about myself. And I realized I was learning more and more about everybody else that was with me. And in doing that, I was learning more and more about human nature, what it meant to be a person, what it meant to be afraid, what it meant to be nervous and excited, what it meant to succeed, and what it meant to fail, but what it meant to share all those things with other people. And for me, those were incredible times. They were thrilling times. I was thriving, I was growing, Every day I was learning something new. And interestingly enough, <clears throat> the deeper I went into myself, the deeper I connected to everybody else that was around me, I came up with an idea. And I know it's a little bit crazy, but I thought in high school, you know what? When I grow up, I want to run an outdoor program for high school students. And that's what I did for 20 years. For 20 years, I took high schoolers, and teenagers, and we traveled the world. We went into our own backyard, and we went all the way to the other side of the globe. And we had amazing adventures. These adventures became vehicles for my students, vehicles for them to challenge themselves, to be challenged, to learn about themselves, to grow, to face some adversity, and to connect with each other. And in connecting with each other and understanding themselves, they understood everybody that was around them. It's really hard to explain how I feel about it and the experiences and the emotions that we felt sharing in these experiences. When I was doing these crazy outlandish things in the wilderness or on the rivers or in the mountains, I was always part of the group, even when I played a different role, whether it was a student or as the guide. I, I was playing a different role, but I was part of the group. I wasn't any different. We were all equal. And that was always a really powerful feeling for me when I was a teenager. And I knew that it was a powerful feeling for me as an adult. And it was a powerful feeling for everybody else in the group. <clears throat> and yet, I still had this strange duality of my life. Here I was sharing in these experiences and yet when I walked down the street, people still made the same assumptions about me that they always did. When I'm in the escalator at the airport, people would make comments. People would stop what they were doing and watch me walk by on the sidewalk. People still were assuming that I was living my life with hardship, that I was living my life with adversity, that there were things that must be so hard and so bad for me. <clears throat> that I was doing more than I ever dreamed. And even more, I was sharing in the experiences with other people doing more than they had ever dreamed. They were facing adversity. They were reaching down into the bottom of their heart and finding new strengths within themselves. They were overcoming their own personal fears and their own personal anxiety. They were surviving in places even thriving in places that would just as soon kill them as bring them joy. And these were just regular people. <laughs> they were going through the same experience and the same process that I had gone through when I was their age. And for 20 years, I worked and I shared and I watched and I participated in their struggles and in their successes. And I was there to see it all. Interesting for me, after a while, the places that we were going to, they didn't feel hard. There wasn't that much adversity in them for me. They were immensely powerful. And they were incredibly moving and beautiful. But they weren't the adversity that I was used to. And it was after a few years I realized being in both worlds, sharing in these two different experiences and the way people saw me uh, and the way I interacted with others around me, that I learned 
that we really need to look at the way we define adversity. We need to constantly remind ourselves that what is adverse for one is not adverse for another. It seems so obvious, and it seems really simple. But it's really easy for us to fall back into those regular patterns. Our regular patterns of seeing the world and our regular patterns of judging and classifying and categorizing. We need to redefine what we think of accomplishment. Accomplishment isn't checking the box. Accomplishment isn't grabbing that brass ring. Accomplishment isn't some external measurement that we use. Like adversity, accomplishment for one is not accomplishment for another. People look at me without really knowing anything about me. They look at me and I appear to be adverse. And yet I had shared in moments of true adversity for other people. I'd watch people go through moments of physical, emotional challenges. I'd watch them push themselves farther than they believed they could. I'd watch them accomplish great things. And these are just regular people. These were teenagers, no less. And people thought I was crazy. And some of the most beautiful and incredible and moving things that I've ever experienced another person do was in the company of teenagers. Frequently, they get sold short. And they have done more to inspire me and teach me more about overcoming adversity than most adults in my life have. People see me in these far-flung places around the world, and they assume that I have accomplished something great. They assume I've overcome some tremendous adversity to get there. They think somehow there has to be something special about me. And there isn't. There's nothing special about me. There's nothing different about me from you. To all the people and all the students that I've shared moments with, to all the people that I've clung to cliff tops with, that I've braved 40 below zero temperatures in a snow cave with, to all the people I struggled to breathe oxygen at 20,000 feet with, the people that I've run swollen rivers and dangerous rapids, the people that I've huddled around a camp stove with and laughed and felt exhaustion with, to all the people that have trusted me and let me coach them, and worked with me and let me guide them, and let me share in their process, to let me be there when they feel fear and when they feel frustration, when they feel self-doubt and when they realize that triumph and that joy, even if it's a tiny one. I want to thank all of the people that I've ever connected to and that have willingly and openly trusted me, that has taken a risk and allowed me to be there when they did it, that challenged themselves and that connected themselves to each other and to me. It is their willingness to do that, their willingness to open up, their willingness to take risks, their willingness to challenge themselves and take on adversity that has inspired me. All of those people have taught me courage. All of those people have taught me about overcoming adversity. All of the people have taught me about the power that every person has inside of them, the power to overcome any obstacle, the power to take on adversity, the challenge to work hard, to suffer, to suffer more than we think we can, and to feel joy. All of those people and all of those moments, <clears throat> sharing and all of those things has taught me that there is no difference between me and anyone else. And sharing in those moments of adversity and success and failure, those have truly been my adventures. And sharing in all of those moments with all those other people, those have truly been my accomplishments. Thank you.